Hello everybody. I hope you're all having a good day so far. Um, this is going to be part two of my video game collection. And it's going to be my PlayStation games. Um, I have PlayStation 2, PlayStation 4, and PS Vita games. I don't know why I shortened PS Vita, but oh well. <laughs> and I figured I would go back and forth between Soft Spoken and Whisper. in advance for any background sound. It's very unpredictable today, what they're doing over there, so... Hopefully, hopefully it won't be too, um, like obviously I'm gonna be cutting a lot, so... I'm going to start with my PS2 games. focus on the sounds that I'm making and if they're like triggering or not, you know what I mean? So. This is the Grand Theft Auto trilogy for the PS2. Um, it comes with San Andreas, Vice City, and 3. I like that it came in this box, little box set. When did I get this? I wonder when I got this. Because it says 2006 on the back, but I know I didn't get it then. I think this box set came out like... Well, if you watched the last video I made, I talked about how GTA 5 was, was my first GTA game, and then I got into these ones. Even though the visuals in these ones are a bit dated, they're still realistic and is very, you know, like, comparative to our world in a way, but there's more to it, you know, there's like easter eggs, that's like my favorite part, is just exploring and just messing around and doing easter eggs, but, or finding easter eggs, but I also enjoy playing it, like the um, story.
looks like in the reflection it looks like it says PlayStation 5 so this is the early 90s and it's San Andreas or is it San or San? Hey. oops <laughs> San, San Andreas so dope.
It's pretty much my favorite video game. Um, and I have... It's, it's part of a franchise. And I have four games from it. I honestly don't know how many there are. I think there's more than eight. So, but I have four. I'll explain that too, like as I show you. much to me. Silent Hill. As funny as that sounds, it really does 
doesn't have the CD in it. Uh, so, but I don't think that affects the value of it at all, from what I read about it. But it would have been cool to have the CD because I love the soundtrack. The soundtracks to these games are <laughs> chef's kiss. <laughs> they're quite amazing. Um, and they're mostly written by Akira Yamaoka. hope I said his name right. But I love, I love him. I love the whole people who produced this game, uh, Team Silent. Um, they're basically uh, the Japanese people who made the first couple Silent Hill games before, like I said, Western developers took over. Um, and the stories in these are just so endearing and this one can be kind of funny too, just in how they talk sometimes, and like, like Heather, I, my girl Heather, like I love her, <laughs> but, and it, I don't know, I can't get too into it, because you have to see for yourself what happens. Um, I'll read the back for this one again. 
Mother Morris lived a carefree existence until her world was suddenly turned upside down. Trapped and alone in the mysterious town of Silent Hill, Heather must fight sickening monsters to survive and uncover a terrifying connection between her past and her darkest fears. Featuring shockingly realistic graphics and a cinematic storyline, Silent Hill 3 brings unparalleled horror to life. It's, oh my god, it's, it's beautiful. I really love this. Now that I'm thinking more about what happens in it, like, I'm remembering certain scenes and puzzles and definitely talk more about Silent Hill another time. I may just do like a ramble about it since I I love it so much and I feel like I can't like say everything I want to say about it in this video so but that's the third one There's a lot of people who don't like this one, um, from what I've seen. A lot of people don't care for this one. The gameplay is different, but I don't think that affects the story at all and, like, how much I enjoy it. I still think this is a fantastic game. Again, deep, really deep subject matter, really sad, really scary. Like, man, these, these games are, they are the most thrilling horror for me ever. I think they're the only thing that'll really put, I don't know, that's not necessarily true. I was gonna say it's the only thing that'll make me have, like, fear chills from, like, some media, but it's, I mean it, like, it's, it's psychological. The job. It's, I guess, what I love about Silent Hill is they don't work on jump scares all the time. They use very psychological means of scaring you, and I love that about it. It is just very unique in that sense as well. And, like, I'm, I'm somebody who is very emotionally attached to, like, characters and stuff, even if they're not, like, characters, like, they're not real people, but real people made them, so they're not entirely, you know, I feel like they're not entirely fictional in that sense, which is another cool thing about it, that somebody created these characters and... Henry Townsend finds himself trapped in his apartment, and the only escape is through a mysterious portal that leads to a horrifying alternate reality. With gruesome sights around every corner and his sanity being tested, he must find his way out of this nightmare. Enter the room, the latest story in the most terrifying game series of all time. I find it funny how it's called the room because of Tommy Oso. <laughs> see the room. I'm transported to Tommy Wiseau, but <laughs> this is, this is good. It's also, like, the other games are hard, especially if you play them on hard, but, like, this one can be very challenging. Um, this isn't a spoiler. I'll just say it. This game introduces ghosts, which there's no ghosts in the previous two, so they're like harder to kill or like harder to uh, you can't even kill them i don't think i don't
don't think you can kill them. I think you just have to, like, scoot around them. I don't know. I don't remember, but things like that. I just love that. This one is definitely different from the previous two I just showed you, but again, I still think it has its place in the Silent Hill universe, 100%. 100%. You may disagree with me on that, but I, I love that. Because it's, um, also because it doesn't take place in Silent Hill. Like, he's in a different place that ends up connecting to Silent Hill in some way. I'll show you the back of this one. I was just noticing that the teeth on this person. <laughs> Look at just the visuals are so creepy and like <clears throat> again it's something that will never I don't think it'll ever reach this potential of you know good psychological horror. It's just one of a kind. It is challenging too. Here's a suggestion that I have. Um, there's riddles in these games, right? You can play it on easy, medium, or hard, I think, or extra hard. I would recommend playing it on hard for the riddles. Well, so you can do the gameplay hard or the riddles hard. So you can, you can do, like, gameplay easy and then riddles hard if you wanted to. But I would suggest doing the riddles on hard, and if you have trouble solving them, just look up the answers because um, the riddles are really cool. And especially in the third one, I don't remember much if there- I don't even know if there's riddles in this one, is there? I don't remember if there's any in the fourth game, but I know they're in the third game, and possibly the, the second. Yeah, they're in the second one and the first, I think, but, um, the riddles are cool. Again, don't worry about if you have to look up the answers to things. My philosophy for playing video games is to enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not a competitive player by any means. I'm somebody who, video games are like interactive movies to me, and they're, they can be very, beautiful and, like, nostalgic and, I don't know. If you're a competitive gamer, that's cool. I, I don't care. Like, you do you. It's fine. <laughs> but it's just not, that's just not how I roll. I like competitive, like, like, board games and stuff like that. Like, that's fun. And, like, <laughs> Mario Kart. Mario Kart's fun. Stuff like that. When it warrants, like, friends, <laughs> when you're, like, having friends over and stuff, but, like, online competitive gaming, I've never been a big person about. I like the individual experience of seeing what happens, and, oh, it's so neat. I, I love it. I love these games a lot. So, I have Silent Hill, Shattered Memories. This is the game that's worth the big bucks. I don't really know why, because a lot of people don't like this one. I would say it's a good installment, um, even though it is very much unlike the other ones. I still think it has a really cool concept to it. Um, I'm not a big fan of the, like, the gameplay in terms of, like, the monsters in this one. Um, I think, like, the walking around and stuff is fine, but I still think this is a cool, a really cool one. And I think it's worth, like, I don't know, the last time I saw it was, like, $300 or something. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? It's weird. It's weird when it's one that, like, is, like, why is this one in demand? Maybe they are too, I don't know. It's 
been a while since I've looked looked these up. So in this one, you play the guy who's the main character in the first game, Harry Mason. And yeah, I love this one too. This one's actually really cool. This one's really cool because it has a psychological engine that they use um, where you, you, it's almost like a therapy session. It is a therapy session. You get asked these questions and based on your answers and based on things you do in this game affects your outcome and affects things that happen in it. And that's really dope for like a PS2 game. I don't know how many PS2 games do that, but it's very, very unique in that sense. And I very much enjoy that part of this game anything. Basically, like, I can give you an example. If you answer to some questions, like, there's some answers that suggest, like, sexual deviance, like, like, you'd be more likely to, like, cheat on somebody or something. And it, if you pick the answer and, it, like, if you, it will give you, like, different posters, like there'll be like a poster of a girl in a bikini or something that you wouldn't get if you picked a different answer. And like, cause they know you'd like stop and look at it and like stuff like that. Oh my God. It's kind of hard to explain, but <laughs> if you like Silent Hill and you haven't checked this one out, um, I check it out. Um, I know that some of the gameplay, like I said, can be a bit annoying like, there's games that I'll play, like, because I want to play it for the story so much that if the gameplay is kind of, eh, I'll still play it. Because I want the experience. <laughs> but, okay. So that was all of my PS2 games. going to be showing you my PlayStation 4 games. So this is called Absu and so I think this is the same company, maybe not, who made um, Journey. favorite games. <laughs> um, I don't have it for the PS4. I used to have a PS3, and I had it for the PS3, but I ended up getting rid of it, selling it actually. And I know you can get Journey on the PS4 if you wanted to, so I would get it there. But this is a game that's similar to Journey, except you're underwater. I know you're underwater in some parts of Journey, but this is mainly underwater. And I love this game. It really is an adventure. Um, again, I love games that are like that anyways. <laughs> so, but this one really does feel like a journey. And there's more to it. There's kind of like a hidden story that you discover as you go along. But it's a very beautiful game. Beautiful animation. The gameplay is fun.
so it is a different maker. The one who made Journey was that game company. This one says what, 505 Games. visually stimulating adventure. I definitely recommend it. So that's absolutely I wish it was adjustable. So I can like set up <laughs> this game. <laughs> this game is awesome. I've played and know of Resident Evil. <laughs> probably around the same time that I was into Silent Hill, but I like Silent Hill better. Um, Resident Evil is still cool though. It's still a cool concept and it's funny how Resident Evil is typically thought of alongside Silent Hill, but they are very different. I would say Resident Evil is a lot less psychological, for sure, but it's still creepy. <laughs> um, this game is epic. It is unlike any of the other Resident Evil games. It is so creepy. Like, you basically spend, you spend your whole time on a homestead, so you don't leave, like, the house or the property creepy in itself. That's, I feel like that's a very, like, alienating feeling. <laughs> that being the scenario. But this is a really neat, creepy game. I highly recommend this one a lot. Um, the characters that you have to be wary and cautious of are, they have a sort of autonomy to them. So, they will literally just, if they see you, they start following you. And like, I don't know, it's got a really cool feel to it. I think I finished this. I'm pretty sure I finished this game too. I can't remember, but like, I remember the ending. I remember seeing the ending. And I don't, I think maybe I forget which ending I had because I think there's different different endings. Oh, this was the 20th anniversary Resident Evil 2. That was cool. 2017. Let's come out. Definitely check out this one, though. This was, like, a game that I was, like, um, because I do have standards because of Silent Hill, so this is one that definitely like measured up to. It's not, I don't think it's on the same tier as Silent Hill, but in my opinion, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty up there. Like it's in terms of like creepiness and the gameplay is really fun too. Like there's a lot you can do. Um, um, I don't have the VR. Dude, imagine playing this in VR. How terrifying it would be. <sighs> if you like horror games, check this one out. You won't regret it. I 
think people were making fun of it, though, because of how, um, the main character reacts to some things, <laughs> which I find funny. It's very true. He's very, um, very stoic. <laughs> but sometimes I think that's kind of fun when there's, like, a character that hasn't been introduced before. And they're like that. Like, they're like, what? Whatever, my hand just got dropped. So, I have the Outlast Trilogy. Um, my friend Jade got this for me. I think for my birthday or Christmas. And I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I know that Outlast is a good game. Like, I've heard that it's good. I watched a couple playthroughs of probably the first one and maybe the second, but I haven't played it myself yet. Um, no, it's probably good too. Just haven't gotten around to it, that's all. things like this, where it's all three games in one. I don't have much to say about it, just because I haven't gotten around to playing it yet, so. But again, I know it's, it's something that a lot of people like. Okay, this is my last Pretty sure all of the ones I have are in physical form. I don't think I have any PS4 games that I got from the store, like the online store. So, as I was talking about Persona earlier, I have Persona 5 for the PS4. Um, this one I'm not sure how far I am into it. I don't think I'm very far into it. Um, but again, dope. I remember when this came out, people were so excited <laughs> for PS5, or PS5, for Persona 5. Um, it's dope. Just this, again, just the vibe of it, like the setting, <laughs> like, that you get to, like, walk around the city and I had played it at a time when, I don't know, like I was kind of distracted by things and I was trying to distract myself with it and I didn't get very far. I don't know, something weird like that. <laughs> this is just fun to play if you want to step into a different world. <laughs> I mean, I know they're all good for that. Horror, the horror stuff I showed you. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Um, the last games I have to show you guys are my PS Vita games. Now I know in the first part, um, I showed my Switch because they were Switch games. I showed the console. I think I'm just gonna do a separate.
It was kind of funny because, so this is like a rhythm game, um, which is where you, you have to like hit the buttons to the notes and the beats and whatever in the music in like a dance battle. <laughs> so. I'm not a big fan of most of the music on here. Don't hate me for that. Um, I like I like the song. Um, I don't know. I'm a bit partial to um, <laughs> the music. I'm sorry. It's like a remixed song on there that I like, but I think the concept is still cool. Like rhythm games are cool and. The fact it's Persona, which is neat. I actually made a post somewhere one day saying uh, petition to make a JoJo rhythm game. <laughs> like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure rhythm game. How freaking interesting that would be. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not a thing yet. That's another thing, JoJo. When I had my PS3, um, I had my friend, the same friend that got me, um, uh, never mind. I thought she got me one of these games. She got me the CD, the submarine CD that I did in another video, but, um, she got me JoJo. Um, all-star battle for the PS3 and I feel really bad because I ended up selling my PS3 and the game is for it but I didn't see myself playing it very much in the future I don't know it's mostly for nostalgia and you know because I love Jojo and her and I love Jojo so it's just like a memory thing for us but So, this is, this is Virtue's Last Reward. I'm sorry I hesitated so much. It's because I wasn't sure if it had, like, a main title or if this was what it's called. But this is a sequel game to the game 999, which is a DS game. And the 999 stands for... Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Um, it's dope. It, it's it's really dope and unsettling. I haven't played this one yet. Um, I've only played through nine nine nine, so I gotta get into this because I loved nine nine nine. It was so cool and disturbing very disturbing. There's lots of, uh, um, like the violent references to it. Um, descripting, very descript, dis, what's the word? <laughs> very detailed in terms of describing the people dying and like, it's really dope. Again, like another Danganronpa type scenario. That's so weird. How many uh, things are like that? That are like Japanese games. <laughs> it's still very different from Danganronpa, but I love the art style too. Like, I really like how the characters look. Again, I don't know any of these people because I haven't played it, but um, the other game, I, I knew the people in it, and oh, what a cool game. What a very, like, like, what if? Like, how? Oh, check it out. Check out 999, I think. I think, um, it's a... I was gonna say it's like horror, but it's a puzzle adventure. So neat. Very cool. I gotta play that, but... 
again, I can do gameplays with you guys doing all these things, all these games I've showed you, so. And this is Danganronpa 2. I don't think I've finished this all the way through, but I love it. <laughs> um, I've talked about Danganronpa very briefly before. first game, in the first, because there's an animation of it now, like a TV show animation. In the first one, they're in a school, I think. They're just in like a big building, and they're trapped in there. But this one, they're on an island, like a deserted island. It's so dope. Like, it's so messed up, the, the stuff in this, but it's so lit. Like, basically, because, you know, it's like all the characters, and they're, you, you get attached to them, and then they get attached to each other, and then they die. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna spoil anything, obviously, but it's just, it's cool. I like this one. I enjoy this one a lot. Very summer vibes. And I think I did play it in the summertime, too. All rise. I'll definitely talk more about Dog and Rob. It's very cool. It'd be cool to cosplay somebody from this eventually. Uh, it's neat. <laughs> oh my god, we're ending on such a funny note. <laughs> so, I loved Vocaloid growing up. Um, if you don't know what Vocaloid is, it's basically How do you even describe them? They're like... They're Japanese characters that were created and they have voice and you can use the voice, the voice box of the different characters to make music, make songs with it. And, um... I have a Miku. I have a Miku, um... I think this is a rhythm game too, right? Pretty much. Same type of deal. But this is cute. Like, this is cool. Um, and kind of funny. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. But this is Project Diva. F2, F2nd. <laughs> and not only can you dance and do the rhythm game, you can unlock costumes and accessories for them and you can like you have like a room they each have like a, a room where you can like pet them feed them you can give Len his food <laughs> like his dinner it's just so funny it's like such a funny concept to me but it's still fun like and it has um artwork I just think it's funny. It's funny and cute. <laughs> I'm not very good at rhythm games. <laughs> I'm actually pretty bad at this, so...
So I would have had more to show you if I had kept my PS3, but not today, unfortunately. But that's okay. I wanted to downsize with my games anyways. And, you know, keep... It's not like Journey didn't mean anything to me. Like I said, I wanted to get it on the PS4. If I can get it on a game console that I already have, um, that's still making games and stuff, you know, I'd rather do that instead. But that was cool, showing you guys these. I'd have to say that the PlayStation is one of my favorite consoles. I think they all have their own special about them, like the 360, the Xbox, and the Switch, and PlayStation. They all have their own cool things about them. But I also have other games on my Vita, too. Um, like I have Hotline Miami on there, but I mean, I'll show you guys my Vita someday. part two to my video game collection and the last part will be my DS games so I'll show you guys that probably two weeks from now so Chunk says goodbye. <laughs> I always want to say goodnight, but again, you may not be going to sleep right now, so um, I hope you have a good rest of your day and night.